Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to FMA Discussion. This is episode 307, and today we're running a little earlier than normal um, to accommodate uh, Guru Nico, who lives in Belgium, who's six hours ahead. So we're going to be bringing him up, and <clears throat> if you have any questions, please put them in the comments section. If you're watching, tell us where you're watching from. Smash that like button, and I'm going to be bringing up soon. Here we go. Hey there. Hey Dean, how are you? How are you? Good, good, good. And uh, right. good to see you after a few you days. Turn the volume up a little bit. You're coming a little on the low end. Let me just. All right. Yeah, no, that's better. Oh no, that's better. Better, better. Okay, better, we're good. Yeah. Yeah. So well, yeah, thank you for coming on. So today, folks that you're watching, we're going to be covering his journey. We're going to start uh, his tenure in the Philippines, um, how he started out in the UK. 1990. Oh, 1990. Yeah. Wow. That's definitely. Uh, no, sorry. Since 2000, 2001. I left 2000. for the Philippines in 2001. So yeah, around 19 years. Crazy. I thought. No, that's a long time. So, uh, so I guess we can start with is what what brought you there why did you decide to go to philippines uh, yeah martial arts <laughs> you know not i initially you know it could have been any martial arts to be honest since uh since a very young age i have been always like you know martial art passionate you know and i always dreamt initially to go to the you know to the shaolin temple you know like everybody we all grew up with bruce lee you know all the movies of uh, yeah kung fu i might be a shaolin monk i can tell you that <laughs> yeah you know, so yo not so and then you know i always kept practicing the martial art filipino martial arts honestly was never really anything you know that well that came onto my rat, uh, radar until pretty late until i found out actually that no santo you know in the movie you know, is the game of death i think with the towers i guess that was actually a student of uh, Filipino martial arts. And anyway, so, you know, one thing led to the other, I guess. Um, yeah, wait, I, I'm jumping again. So, yeah, how did I end up in the Philippines? So around 2000, yeah, I think that's when the Internet actually became, like, pretty accessible. And I had some means to actually finally realize, realize my dream and, you know, to get, a little, get away a little bit from, uh, you know, from Belgium and uh, do what I actually wanted to do. I went uh, to the internet and I started doing research on any possible, you know, martial arts that I was interested in initially. Again, it was like China. It was like, well, of course, I've always been like, because I initially came out of kickboxing, you know, uh, Savat. I, I've been touching a little bit of everything. So I looked into Thailand. And then all of a sudden I came across, you know, the, the, the forum of Amok, you know what I mean? Of, uh, and then, you know, there was a uh, little Tuhon, a uh, little guy who was pretty... Uh, how he called this he was pretty um active on that forum i don't know if you remember those days and yeah early 2000s yeah uh, 2001 2000 oh my gosh yeah i was in the middle of it i was with sayak and atienza so i was knee deep in it whether i wanted to be or not yeah all right yeah there we go so again and then i heard about him and then he was he had that forum and then i instigated instigated like uh, how do you call this uh uh, chat with him and he was very accommodating on the on the this and I, on, on, online and I told him you know about my desire I would love to you know further my uh, how to call this my uh, my 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 learning in, into martial arts even though that I had no experience whatsoever in Filipino martial arts he started uh, how to call this befriending a little bit and he said hey you know what I'm coming to Rutlingen in Germany you know to Uli Weidel gym and that was in May 2001 so yeah may 2001 so of course i had it over there and i took the train it was a two-day workshop first day i saw the man at work and you know i was like just blown away you know by oh his my God, yeah. Yeah. by his abilities i never really saw anybody you know move with like with, with knives the way he did and again i was a young young man also you know i was also a little bit alpha male you know anything with knives was like very cool looking so again i was a bit impressed and I just, I really, this is what I wanted, this is what I needed, you know, this is the real deal, you know, so at the time I thought, and I remember I, I tried to approach him, but there was too many people around him. Oh, yeah, it's tough, man, you got the whole seminar there, people crowding him, and you're trying to get... I yeah. do that for dinner, they were not for dinner, and again, he was cold, so he left out early, because, you know, of course, he's not used to the weather, you know, so he left, and it wasn't even that cold, but then again, the day after, you know, like, by uh, God's grace, 
he was just sitting there alone at lunchtime, you know what I mean? Playing with something in his bag, I don't know, checking probably, you know, one of his 100 knives. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and I just approached him and I said, hi, Tuhan, you remember me? I was the first. And, oh, yeah, of course. And he knew that I had a dog because I used to have an Argentinian doggo, yeah. And I knew he had also dogs, so of course, you know, I do know how to, you know, a little bit, you know, get into people's. I said, okay, he likes dogs. I like dogs. It should be the, let's start talking to dogs and we yeah. talked about dogs. After a while, I told him I would love to come to the Philippines, but I really don't really have much means. You know what he told me? You don't worry. You know, you love dogs. You come to my place, you know, you're more than welcome. So I literally went out of the gym. It was in a warehouse. I went down, you know, I jumped in the air and was like, wow, this is it, you know? So he gave me an opportunity and, that was May, and then July 17, I left for the Philippines. Since then, you know, I... Oh, wow, wow, wow. Just so, man, and we got folks watching. We got, oh my gosh, we got Maestro Ray Thor from, uh, oh my God, it's 2A. <laughs> oh, Ray, <laughs> how you doing? Oh, and we got Brad, Robert Small. Yes, folks, if you're watching, tell us where you're watching from. Smash that like button. Um, so, all right, so you, so you take him on his offer. You're, man, you're sold. You're jumping on a plane and, and going Actually, there. I, I forgot something. Before that, in 2000, actually, before I started on the AMOC form, I did went to a workshop of uh, Daniel Santo. So I went oh, to okay. All right. It was either 1999 or 2000. It was in Paris. So I went to his workshop, and then again, him also, like, you know, wealth of knowledge, such a, such a kind man. You know, again, there's also hundreds of people. So I was able yeah, to. Yeah, you got to, like, go through the bodyguards. And but I, yeah. And I wanted already to have some information. I was able to talk to him and I asked him about the Philippines. And he told me, you know, I never been to the Philippines, but I do know there's still cousins of Illustrissimo. Cousins of Illustrissimo. So again, I did some research. The only work that you could find about really Illustrissimo was on Bakbakan, you know, the Bakbakan website. Yeah, yeah. yeah amazing okay. article. So I went through literally everything possible. It was just Leo Gahe, and then again at the time, you know, I was also, like I said, uh, a little bit lost. You know, I was also like a bit uh, ego driven male, you know. At the end, you know, I'm like, I want to join the French Foreign Legion a while, you know, and then I want to become a bodyguard. So I was like, he's working with the military, this is the place to go, you know. So mm -hmm. again, I was sold. I went to Bacolod, and then my life changed, you know, everything was just so different than I thought it would be, but it was all for the better, all for the better. So and then I arrived in Bacolod. So yeah, that's how I arrived in the Philippines initially. So all right, so you go over there, you take uh, GT's recommendation and accommodations, <laughs> and uh, so you go there. So what's uh, are you? Did you actually actually stay with him, or you get your own place? Or uh, the first and we already arranged. Uh, he told me you can live with me. You know, like I said, you love dogs, you stay in my place, no problem. Because at the time, you know, I really was like, you know, I had a little budget. I was minimal on money, you know, I had a certain budget. So I told him and he was extremely generous. You know, mm -hmm. he, 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 you know it's ridiculous. You know, I don't want to say it because there's other people that pay the same price for a day. Maybe. But again, I have been very honest with him also. So, you know, like sometime, you know, we have to have, a, you know what I mean? The connection also. No, he took care of me, took me in like a son, you know. So first 10 days I stayed in a guest house because they were preparing my room. And then after I was like, you know, they made my room, you know, they really, I was like, uh, honestly gave me an air condition, you know, my clothes were ironed day in, day out. I had food morning. Wow. I cannot say anything, you know, his wife, they, you know, you know, I, I can only have respect for them. Even if we had like, you know, some falling out, some kind of way, like everybody, I still saw them again afterwards. And when we saw each other, you know, again, you know what I mean? We sat together, we laughed together and that's okay. I can really not say anything bad about yeah, it. Yeah, you know, why keep ill, feeling, Ill feelings? I mean, right? If you can rectify her and get move on, that's I'm yeah, sure that's it was right. just, to be honest, it was just like, you know, petty things. Little yeah. guy, you gotta know him, man. He's a personality, you know what I mean? He's a, he's a great man, you know what I mean? But no, was, he's, uh, he's got, there's a charm about him. I mean, yeah. Uh, as everybody says, I mean, it's no oh, secret, you know, I mean, I, I, you know, I've seen him a few times over here under Ron and um, he can charm the crowd. I mean, he's, I mean, he's got that gift, uh, you know, the gift of gab and what have you. But um, so when you're, so you're living with him and all that. So are you, 
I mean, you know, that's how old are you again when you when you moved? Uh, I was like twenty five. It was like twenty five. Oh, that's and young. So you're twenty five. Yeah. You're moving over there. I mean, obviously, there's a language barrier. Um, oh, not, not really, actually. You know, English. You know, because my English wasn't far from was far from proficient. It really improved a lot since I went there. You know, so I have some funny stories about that. Yeah. The guy actually always told me in the beginning. I said, "Yeah, but I have a hard time to make myself understand." And he told, me, "Hey, Nico, if people don't understand you, it's their problem, not yours." It's like, okay, oh, that's easy. All right. that, that that alleviates a lot. I'll just make it their problem. Give me some confidence. At least I kept trying, you know, yeah. so that it improved. So the language language barrier with him was not a problem. I uh, well, good, I don't, good, good, good. Well, you know, he was living there at the same time. We stayed together. I was with Nono Igahucho. You know, it was like really like a high level of English. You know, I mean, for wow. So again, I was in good hands. I was in good hands. And then initially, you know, of course, you learn the language a little bit. And, you know, yeah, it was great right. times, but. Again, it wasn't really what I looking for. What I was looking for, I guess, was fun for the first year, one year and a half. And then again, I was not, uh, you know, I came really from a background, you know, I used to study Jeff Thompson, you know, when I mean, all the likes, you know, when I mean, mm. I don't know if you're familiar with Jeff Thompson, you know, I was like, as I said, you know, when I was young, I had my teacher in kickboxing, he was like, a, how do you call it? It's like a bouncer sometime, you know, if needed somebody, I work with him. I was really like, the guy of you know gotta know how to spark somebody gotta know how to really you know like take somebody down choke him out i mean you know certain things for me were not applicable that i saw being taught to the military for example you know i just found it a bit i mean you know there we go and that was what i saw then now don't get me wrong now there is other guys here from piquiti that i highly respect also i mean sure, you know yeah. they're teaching like uh, uh what's his name and why my good friend eric uh, eric Lolanier. You know what I mean? The French guy, you know what I mean? He's a police guy. I mean, what he teaches, of course, you know, he can apply it. He can use it. Teaching it to civilians, I, you know, that's a different concept. You know what I mean? That I don't think they could benefit from it as much as as others. And uh, because, first of all, they haven't seen the violence. That man uh, had seen like Jared Wiongi, for example, also, you know what I mean? Certain things. Yeah, if we teach law enforcement can work. Now, if we go into the civilian self-defense as i said you know i do not think really we can uh, categorize philippine martial arts for me as general is not self-defense you know so i think yeah, that's, that's, a, that's interesting you bring it up because that's one of the theme episode i'm tempted to maybe do but i don't know about the controversy is F is fma legitimately can be construed as a self-defense. And I don't have a dog in the argument. I just think it'd be a neat thing to discuss as far as a team episode and get people's lenses on it. You know I, mean? I, I believe there's two, and I believe yes and no. But again, yeah. like yeah, it's a two-way street. Right, exactly. I just, I just gave you the answer. In my, my, my answer, I'm sorry, yeah, you know what I mean? Like I said, nothing's absolute. My point of view now, like a man like Eric, for example, you know what I mean? I mean, in these situations, maybe I don't know the line of work he's doing. I also have like, you know, law enforcement in the family. I mean, I know their line of work. They might actually be legally mandated to, uh, you know, or they might have access to that kind of force and need to use it. But then for a civilian, if we really do need to train those kind of this, I think better instead of buying so many knives, save up some money and move out of the area and look for a yeah, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I go, hmm, I can buy or move. And we got yeah. Michael Moore, Morney. Hey, we're still waiting for you to come on. I love Mo Morney. He has also <laughs> guy. He gave me, honestly, he's not a guy that gave me, I mean, there's one thing one time, you know, I'm sorry that he, it's, I just reminded him now. In the beginning, I was very skeptical about what he was teaching me. Also, like I said, I come of a hard-hitting kind of guy. You know, I hit, you go down, or, you know, I'm a bit like, you know, I'm a bit, yeah, I used to be a hair trigger. I used to be, you know, I have heavy hands, like, you know, and then about it. Before, hey, I lost some weight. I was 20 kilo heavier. No, not 20, but I used to be like a good 90 kilo at time 20 years ago. I mean, you know, but anyway, he said, you know, everything is just what he's showing our moments in time. And that made me think, but yes, of course, those are moments in time. You know, it's not necessarily has to start here. It could be mm. actually starting from just below, but it was a moment in time that we were able to use a technique. Or he said also, when you charge, yeah, we use a technique because we can't go backwards because we have, it's a tribal gang, you know, it's a tribal yeah. warfare. 
you got to keep going forward or they were fighting on the how do you call that on those riverbanks in said in Borneo you know what I mean so you had to you could only move and push people off you know it's starting to make sense so he put he put things really well in context and again the guy is not saying oh this is the ultimate this is how you but I'm gonna tell you one thing I haven't trained with him but I'm pretty sure you know when you get a knock from him you know you'll feel it you know you look he has that power that's the yeah. same as Tony Diego you know Tony Diego also it's just even when he was like oh Older, you know, you could just know that haha, if he starts moving, you don't want to have anything to do with him. You know what I mean? It's just can cheche Rahman. Funny story, I'm mixing. I was also, you know, I call this realistically this and that. I said, can cheche. What if somebody attacks you? My kids were there. What if somebody really attacks you and you just turned around because you was just doing something else? What do you mean? I said realistically. He said attack me, and I just really went for a stab. You know what I mean? To his side. I promise you, I found myself on the floor. I have no idea how. You know what my son said because it was the first time that he saw can catch a move. My son, he said, "Wow, he's faster than the Flash." So there is some people, honestly. Yeah, you know, you give me now. I don't know Randy Couture and can catch up. Actually, I don't know where I'm going to put my money. I'm probably going to put it on Kanchecha Rahman, just to tell you. Because they are martial artists, they have trained since a young age. They have been able to, you know, it's not instant coffee. It's brute coffee over the years. And they can play, they can change time. They, oh, it's brilliant. And again, I believe we have to go back to that when I say we have to bring back in the culture, you know, what I mean, the dedication, the mind, the body, the soul, not the quick fix anymore. Now people are carrying, you know, weapons in there, you know, woman bragging about all those knives and a knife here. But can we actually carry a knife? Which state can we? Which state can we not? When, why, when are we allowed to use it? When are we not allowed to use it, you know? So again, Filipino martial arts, yes, it can work. Of course, it's an extremely efficient martial art. I do believe that. Again, you might be a man who have encountered some violence, maybe me not. So maybe for you, you know, it can work. Maybe for me not. Because, again, if somebody comes to you even with a, with a face like that, you know, shouting, I mean, honestly, you, yeah, you can know all the techniques. I tried it. I had a Krav Maga an expert, you know, Singaporean guy. He hurt one of my uh, my students, you know, an Olympic champion. Take, no, not Olympic, I'm sorry, world champion Taekwondo. You know, he was trying to show off and he banged him against the wall. And, you know, he almost, you know, against like one of those things to put an elastic on. And my friend really got hurt and he got choked. And I was like asking, he said, why didn't you do anything? And he said, you know, what do you want me to do? Okay. And I took a little bit of the hair and I was asking the guy, so how did you do that again? And he told me, yeah, just choke me, put your hand here. So what I did, you know, I choked him, but I choked him with my two hands full out. Did you think he was able to do a technique? The only thing, the first time he said, no, 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 it's not like this, it's like that. I just did the same thing, but harder. You know what he answered me? Oh, he have been training martial arts also just to get out of it. But just to say, all the techniques, if you don't pressure them, they're not going to work. No, that's a whole nother, that, that's a good subject Sorry. there. Yeah. Sorry, after I will let you talk a little bit. After that will lead to the point. Now we make Filipino martial arts about just sparring. We make it just about, you know, charging at each other and you have to know distance. But no, that, 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 that's not the point. That's not the purpose. We show like footworks for me that are far from efficient. Yeah, yeah, you see Tata and Ristrissimo using it, but every time he uses it, look at him, he's smiling because they're playing. They're doing cha-cha, cha-cha, you know, moving a little mm -hmm. bit. They're not really. It's a great first step movement i'm talking about that long ball right now because if we talk about movement dynamics anchoring proper lever we really can propel ourselves extremely fast forward same as with the lutang for example yeah. properly executed but again if we start to make it i remember how Tony called that there's the two arts you know forgive me i you know so many things but there's the you know the the the, the performance part and then there's the efficient part. And if you look at any efficient fighter, any style, we all have the same things in common. They don't overly expose themselves. You know, it's not telegraphic, not least. It's not telegraphic, you know, and then closest tool to closest target, you know, mm -hmm. opportunity striking, vital tools. You know, mm -hmm. actually, <clears throat> I have three systems I adhere to, and the only reason why I love other systems, don't get me wrong, eh? that's what I said. But I have three systems I really, really trying to delve into, and that is uh, Calis Ulistrissimo, that is uh, Panglipo Silat, and it's also, since a long time, it's uh, Richard Dimitri's work. 
you know mm -hmm. what I mean, from the early days up to now. Because all those three, they blend in together. If we talk about this shredder, I can get you videos where I can show you can Cheche performing old school silat, same principles, explanation within the symbols that actually are the shredder. And you wonder, you know, how were these people like hundreds of years ago coming up with those universal principles? It's a beauty, you know? So I guess that's what I would like to be able to bring back actually to Filipino martial arts. I mean, I don't know if it ever existed, but I think we tried it with Modern Arnis, bringing it to the schools. But I think we promoted it wrongly because we still promoted it more, I think, as maybe self-defense and as, you know, that it's, it's, while it should have been more promoted as Cognitive Kali does right now, you know what I mean? Healthy body, you know, uh, uh, left and right, ambidextrous, uh, you know. We, yeah, uh, cross, cross, you know, cross midlining. Cross crawling, yeah. you know, the whole thing. Because it has so much benefits. I spoke about it with Mantoni. I mean, you know, if we would teach like, you know what I mean? Just... I mean, just the elderly, if you could just start and you just remove even the hands and you just start going backward, forward, backward, forward, you understand? A loot tank, but we're working on balance already, right? You can mm. also, I call this, you can go sideways. You can, I'm just saying, we can bring it to wherever we want. I think Filipino martial arts is open to everybody. But for the moment, the problem is so many people are shying away from it because it's only being promoted to the glorification of the knife of the kill of the cutting the blade yeah i mean which which is why we're kind of behind you know uh, like if you look at like i had an episode on this like why we need fm more fma schools and we're behind you know as far as the business model and just the so you know you know infomercials getting the word out there but again if we want to glorify the ancient times of edge what uh, you know, I get it, but I don't know if that's going to necessarily help as far as the promotional and growth of FMA, you know. Look where are we living? Look where, look at the violence that's occurring already. Mm -hmm. We should do our best to outbird violence, not to promote it. And, you know, mm -hmm. I'm sorry to say, but if you have to live, like, you know, I mean, I don't get it. You know what I mean? Here you cut the knife and here you go for, you know what I mean? You cut this mm -hmm. artery. But we can as well also cut, cut the biases, maybe, or you know what I mean, anything else to this. Yeah, thing. you know, it's that's that's a whole nother like you know, a topic. It's like, okay, and this is where I think FMA could do a better job. I'm saying this, I think some address it. I'm not making this universal across the board, but oh, there's great people, like I said, you know, yeah. it's not everybody, there's it's just the majority of people that we get attracted to FMA. And no, I mean, I know it's like you know, like one of the things couple of items is like okay are you doing enough just to get out of there you know you know what is your exit plan and i think fma can do a better job in those areas as a whole i'm not saying there's some that address that but like what are you doing for an exit you know what i mean you know what you know like are you going into these massive templates and these overkill with the trainees for 20 years I'm not so sure you're going to shut that off in real time and that you've been training something for 20 years you're just going to you're just going to say oh i'm just going to go here to a leg to diminish him and go well if you haven't trained that or you're not thinking that what's going to make you just do that you know if you're not you know right. what I, mean? so I think there's areas that could be improved but, upon. yeah i spoke with june about it because you know we will be doing a joint uh how do you call this a joint uh workshop so i had to ask him a little bit also i love his work you know what i mean he looks like a really nice guy i spoke with him you know with a few calls and i asked him a little bit about his point of view in life and then he explained me a little bit so he reassured me because i did ask let's just do sticks because i do also work with some children here and i do work with mm -hmm. like you know it's like i live in a town you know and i mean again you know we try to outbird sometimes a little bit violence, you know, so I try to work from young age, you know, 12 year old, because that's often when our kids are left alone. There's so many prog programs here for the youth up to 12 because it's so easy to work with them. After 12, the kids become difficult and nobody want to work with them anymore. So yes, yeah. <laughs> the, the pre-teens. <laughs> so that's a little bit what I'm going to try to do here with martial arts. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the reasons also that I don't teach weaponry directly anymore. One of the reasons of my organization, you know, it, it took a long time for me, you know, how can I do that? How can I not disrespect one? How can I be doing my own thing? But I don't want to create my own system. I mean, I have my own way of teaching. Yes. Mm. Mantoni always told me, Nico, he said, Nico, I give you the key to my house because I trust you. But once you go inside, if you want to go upstairs or you want to go to the kitchen first, it's all up to you.
Do you understand? And that's a little bit the same in Panglipur. You know, in Panglipur, once we passed our, um, I mean, our, uh, how do you call this? We had to do our testing, you know, for my, me for my level one, you know, instructorship. At the end, you know, you have the ceremony and it's like with the, I don't remember exactly, rice cakes. It's all different flower stuff. Yeah. I think seven different products, you know, make mistakes. And at the end, they even put something in your eyes for the purification, the opening of the eyes. It's beautiful. And you perform that really in front of not just one, the teacher. It's all the old students, you know. You have no idea what you're going to be asked for a question. You know? So it's like really like a constraint-led approach because they really want to, see you know what i mean how you uh mm. china, that might, in china that might get you drunk to see how you actually are as a person you know what i mean but there no they will actually put you under pressure and ask you the question if see if you actually understood that you know what i mean if it was worthwhile to make you an instructor but again to go back to that it just say we, we can teach the same art differently mm. with the same as long as we maintain the same ingredients now if we start for example in cali Silistrissimo, start to add like i'm sorry siniwali then we're not teaching Silistrissimo anymore yeah like if you, right if you want to adapt it well, he's not, and, and i see some grandmasters grandmasters you know i will just say it you know they don't they teach Siniwali in the workshops. I know where it came from because mm -hmm. there is who was a modern Arnis in exchange for her, her, her teach for them teaching. So again, is it pure? Is it respectful to Mantoni? No, for me it's not. So therefore, I will always say Calicilistrissimo. Actually, I don't even like the name Repetition Original. I like Calicilistrissimo now because now there's so many, you know, Calicilistrissimo. But before when there was Mantoni, even that, yes, it was Calicilistrissimo Repetition Original. Mm. It was the only Calisilistrissimo. Afterwards, we had Bahad Zubu. Of course, Yuli did his own thing. That was great. Mangromi taught his way. But Mangromi, I, I never really remember a name behind the system. It's only afterwards the passing. And then it came to the, you know, it was with Fabricio uh, Mansour. And then, you know, and even, boy, it's just that, come on, let's give. And those people never came to Luneta anymore. Some of them never came to Luneta. After Mantoni's death, they never even came back anymore. And Mantoni, the only thing he wanted was, let's leave. You know, Lutleta, you know, the Mecca of uh, Listrissimo. That's where Antonio Listrissimo started it. Let's have it, uh, I recall this. But it's sad to say, at his passing, first day of his passing, at his wake, there was already a person going, you know, talking to one of his half-brothers, I think it was, or half-sisters, to ask permission if he could write a book about it was a foreigner, you know, a good friend though. I mean, you know, now we're good, but I was like, come on, are we kidding each other? That person was just there to, you know, to loss. He hadn't seen his brother mm -hmm. for, I don't know how long. And all of a sudden we started to try to, you know, how it goes. But just, you know, the attention grabbing. I have been in the Philippines for 19 years. I have lived all over. I've been to Cebu. I stayed in Bacol a long time. I have been all over Luzon. I lived in almost two years in Mindanao. I went to places, you know, I went to Mindanao, to Nonas. Mindanao region, you know, when I came back, people said, oh, you crazy. Honestly, I met some of the friendliest people. I did yeah, yeah, ask. Sure. Yeah, I did ask here, everybody. Martial arts. Kalis was not known. No, Kalis was known as a blade, not as an art. Kali was not known. Silat was known, but Silat was not known as a, how do you call this? As a martial art. It was the ilmu, the, the power. They were talking, it was those inner power things. But again, mm -hmm. I never met many grandmasters. I never did. I can still count them. I mean, you know, the last one for me, I mean, if you think about it, it was Joe Vinyas. I, I didn't meet him anymore. I met one of his students, Jeffrey Montelibano, lovely man. He brought me all over Bacolo. You know, we went to look at those old mans, some that did Dumont that came from, uh, you know, from Antique. Again, it was just dirty wrestling. Then he met me to another man who was known to have his own art. Oh, a martial art. He killed six Japanese with a sugar cane. And he did a lot. Yeah, but I went to visit the guy and I asked him, could you show me some? And he showed us some. And the only thing he did was, that's it, a few weaving. But again, then his students, based upon the story, became a system and then all of a sudden became an art. But then we forgot to tell that that guy also saw his wife and his children being killed. So I promise you, you kill my wife and my children, you give me anything, I eat you. You understand what yeah, I mean? Yeah, oh, Words so become art and grandmasters. And now, I mean, we have supreme grandmasters. We have, 
Nah, that's yeah. a whole, that's a, there's a whole, matter of fact, that's an episode coming up. We're, we're going to view titles, right. what they mean, um, how far they're going to go, you know, is it getting long? I mean, so that that's actually an episode that's coming up. So, uh, so folks, stay tuned to that one. But uh, yeah. getting just back to your training, you start out with Gahe, what can you, just as far as, and then you go to you go to KI, what could you tell the folks just as far as, like the different methodologies as far as compare and contrast between PTK and KI? Uh, you know, to be honest, like I said, I only did two years of uh, uh, PTK with little guy and I did over yeah, 10 but years. I mean, a lot of footwork, I'm guessing, in the beginning. To be honest, for me, it's night and day. Yeah, so there's, there's no maybe comparison. for the folks who don't really know, like when you say night and day, you know, again, just in general. Like, in general, I believe Pekiti has really, you know, has great benefits. I mean, you know, law enforcement, some of the things that Jared Weong, you know, teaches, Eric, uh, how do you call this? Eric, um, hey, Lolania in French, and some others, forgive me. Romel Tortal also is an extremely gifted martial artist. If I would invite him to teach here, I might be listening. Love you, Romel, you're coming soon. I don't want the sparrings. I just want to teach him, you know, our flow is ground-based fighting, you know, I mean, his locks, he's smooth. But again, if we talk about you want to learn an art for fighting, I mean, fighting is a big word again. No, not necessary. Something more um, combative. No, yeah, e more easily to assimilate. I mean, I would say Illustrissimo is just for the per I mean, I'm biased. I cannot say that. I love Palin Tabak also, I'm sure, even though I didn't practice it, the difference between PTK and Illustrissimo. Well, the mindset. Mantoni never told me, rip somebody's heart out, cut the throat, you know what I mean? We do this, you know what I mean? I heard how many times, oh, this blade, we kill so many arms. So again, it's a bit like CrossFit, you know what I mean? If you like the CrossFit culture, you know what I mean? You might want to go more picky. I mean, before at least, you might want to go picky if you look something more like, I don't know, you know. But here's the thing, though. It's questionable guy hate that he had any actually – you know, matches or he had to use or he killed anybody. It's pretty well known that Tatang um, had had the experience known for it. So I think in that right there, it's like you got one guy that's promoting this, you know, cutting and cutting and the guy who actually did it is quiet. You know what I mean? <laughs> but it's the same bit like now also, I have to be honest, you know what I mean? There's a lot of people come across like, you know what I mean? I mean, I don't like to. My mother is really listening, I'm sure, you know, I even check. She knows me, you know, me and my mom. You know, I, I'm a kid. No, I came up and say hi. <laughs> you know, you know, I came out of, you know, I grew up, you know, my mother, my mother, a hardworking person, you know, my father left us, you know what I mean? We call ourselves before here the group, you know, we were a bunch of kids in the streets. We had no father, literally, you know, so it wasn't easy for us. I had to look my back since I'm 13 years old. You understand what I mean? I mean, I, I was in areas nobody would have been. I mean, most of the people that I've met and I've maybe trained with, I don't know if they saw as much violence as me. Even in the Philippines, I managed the bar. Two bars, you know, we can go. Romel Tortan, he saved me one time actually in Nike in Calvite. My fault, to be honest, a little bit because I also don't let myself get ripped off. I didn't see what's happening in my back, you know. I had a shotgun on my back while I was controlling a guy on the floor in the bar because I got into a fight. All of a sudden, I heard somebody behind my back. No, 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 it's okay. He's with me. I can control. We're with the military. We're with the military. I turn around. I look, I see Romel Tortal, you know, ask, you know, control, you save my life, maybe. Maybe they would have just not, I don't know, but again. So, yeah, you know, some grandmasters now or teachers, they talk about violence like they understand it. Again, I believe, you know, same as me, you know, before it's my own myopic, my, myopic view of violence, you know, because I grew up in an area, you know, and it's uh, eat or be eaten. Do you understand what I mean? So, of course, I can deal with certain things differently than others. If I going to teach that mindset onto somebody, for example, I don't know, to, to, to a woman, and a woman, you know what I mean? I teach her and I really get into her mind and all of a sudden, you know, the husband comes home and I don't know, just, he, I don't know, you just want to hug. 
but normally never hugs her. Ha! And she's just cutting. I have no idea what she has that night, what she's practicing, what she just saw from, you know, I'm sorry, Libre fighting. And oh, no, 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 no. And there we go. And all of a sudden, damn, he's going to make me shake again. And all of a sudden, chopped into pieces. Well, she goes to jail. He's dead. Kids, you know, have no more family. Do we really think about that? You go to a knife class, you see so many different people, so many different cultures. And we all teach them the same way. How can that be? You know, by virtue of us all being different, yeah, we deserve to be treated equally, but we don't deserve to be giving her the same tools. I <laughs> mean, because especially tools, if it can get you into trouble. Because again, if I'm a law enforcement officer and I have to go, or I have to go to extreme undercover and I need that knife, yes, teach me, please, you know, Piper, teach me how I can defend myself. But now, if I am somebody, no, to get my, but if I. I come, you know how many people ask me to teach them karambit since I came back? How many teach send me a message? I love knives. Mm. I don't even I'm a nice guy, I gotta reply. So I reply, I love martial arts. Can you teach me karambit? Can you teach me that I'm sorry? I don't teach that way. I go to progressions. I taught one person, you know, over the years I've been here. I mean, just because he's a nice guy, you know what I mean? He's a, yeah, he's known, but just taking random strangers and giving them edge weapon training without knowing them, man, that's, you know, that's a pitfall or a potential yeah. one, you know? Um, but getting back to... Yeah, sorry. Compared, no, 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 no worries. I'll, I'll re, uh, Getting back to the compare and contrast between KI and PTK, you know, just some of the things I noticed, you know, I never went deep in PTK, but I played around with it enough to give some semblance and, you know, and, and some compare in comparison is that um, I don't see the division between sword and stick. In other words, you know, in case you know where the KI point always in front, never goes behind you. And, you know, that's the, you know, the, I think PTK, the volume of footwork, um, I get it and all that. It seems KI, you do what you do when you need to do it. Just just randomly moving for the sake of moving is... Uh, depending on your length of arm, depending on your, you know. Me, yeah. KI, you know what I mean, so ball levers. KI, yeah, I mean, look at all the top... I mean, for me, it's simple. I, you have to remember also, I'm a... I mean, I, I mean, my wife likes to call it, you know, I'm not letting... I'm into moving biodynamics, you know what I mean? That's mm. my... I used to work. I mean, it's the only shirt I have still from the Philippines. That's why I work. That's from the national team of the basketball, you know. I work with the Sports Institute of the Philippines for that before, and I was there for the past 10 years. I mean, on a movement perspective, I don't, when I watch basketball, I'm a physical trainer and athletic develop. I watch the feet. You understand? So yeah. again, here also, I watch everything, of course, you know, it's trissimo, but I have been observing feet today. Because I was really trying to look at what what's the problem? How come some can and some? It's actually my wife gave me a list. Can you you know explain those? You know, those were good things to answer. And what I all actually see is the footwork is not what the footwork used to be. It's either too wide, you know what I mean? We strike too soon. The strike, you know, everything has to be that shield. Technically, you know, that has no that sword is your shield. Mm. You have to be able to strike, as Mantoni said strike and move simultaneously now that doesn't mean that you have to move too soon either because if you move too soon except maybe if you want to go for an engaño for a bait yeah mm. but again another a mistake many people make antonio you see some had long arms you know That's what some people i know like they know he was tall but what people yes. forget the length of his arms see my son the same you see his arms it's like I don't see him coming. He clocks me all of a sudden. I'm just saying. So, and then we say that media can only be used in a close range. No, not necessarily. Uh, the, 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 the pluma can only be used in a close range. And no, it can be used depending on where you are on your, I mean, on your, your body mechanics and, and on the, the intent and on the, the, the drive. Yeah, transitional. I mean, so. I really would hope that, again, my dream is, I love Brandon also, uh, Brandon Ricketts, you know, I mean, Bruce, I haven't seen him move for a long time. I saw Brandon a few times, you know, it's me, for me, Lustrissimo, the closest to Antonio Lustrissimo, I mean, you know, would be Christopher Ricketts and, of course, and then uh, uh, the code is uh, and Tony Diego, I mean, you know, it's a given. That's what even Christopher Ricketts says, Tony Diego. Hey, Romy Macapagal, yes, he does know the art, of course. He is really like uh, he's ahead, you know. He analyzes things, he sees things. But 
For me, he went a little bit too much into the, you know, the dual aspect, you know, the sword fighting and the range. But you got to remember a thing, you know, when timing is concerned, uh, simplicity is key. And if continuously, you know what I mean, we, no, stop here, you know, because if you do that, you know, for me, it boils down to the thing, those who know don't talk, those who talk, you know, no, you know, we got to. like this stuff on measure. I thought, I do like, I think the stuff on the measure. How do we apply it? That, that, that's what I want to see. I haven't understood it. Mm -hmm. Me, I know how to apply it. Measure. If you want to, I haven't seen it yet. First of all, you have to be at create optimal levers because measure will differ on my length and your length of arms, on my length of legs, on my torso. How do we measure that when we get attacked? No, no, no. It's something you got to practice in real and all that to get acquainted because obviously different yeah. lengths, different, yeah. But I'm, I'm more, of course, from a generic point of lens where I do like where, you know, as far as like that, you know, you finding the gap, no weapon. I think there's too much weapon, con too much on defense. Uh, that's the sad part. It's the funny part. I love Romy. Like I said, it's not, mm -hmm. hey, we were holding hands, me and him. I have conversations privately mm -hmm. with him. It's just he knows. Mantoni, here's David Foggy, you know, he used to call me his attack dog before. You know, Mantoni, when he passed away, you know, me and my life in the Philippines, you know, if I didn't have my wife or my children or the national team, I was also busy with the youth team at the time, I was attached. I know I wouldn't have stayed. I probably would have moved to Indonesia already, look for another person I needed, you know, even though I love to train with Arnold and it's not that, you know, it just... I needed that father figure, you know, that person. You know, oh, oh, I get when he passed. You want? I, I get you. I, 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 you know, Mantoni was just. I could just sit with him, and you feel comfortable. Mm. You know, that's the most I learned from him was when sitting down. It's not when training. I'm happy that my wife was there. Sometimes took a few videos. I'm so happy that so many people before I left gave me all their collection of videos because we didn't take videos before. You know, Mantoni gave me all his videos before his house burned down. You know, I mean, little things like that. And oh, God, well, and nice. I watched, I studied. For, for me, it's like he's there with me, you know, all the time. And, you know, and again, and that's just... But again, I just would like that people... What I found sad is that really Mantoni was, you know, at his wake, there was a seven-year-old kid. I didn't know. His name was James. I said, who's that kid there, you know? You know, little kid, you know, sad, isn't that... Uh, that's one of his adopted kids. I mean, Mantoni took care of 12 children, huh? I None of his uh, uh, I keep hearing. I mean, that, that right there speaks. Yeah, but keep yeah. earning, but we don't, there's other things we don't earn. In his, when, he, in his, when anybody had a birthday where he lived and where he lived, it's really like, uh, you know, when his house burned down, it was a house that came maybe 20 houses farther. Huh? It's the whole block because it's like wood on top. Maybe underneath he was the only one with some concrete, but on top it's still wood, you know, plywood flies true anyway so uh, anybody at a birthday party he would make sure that they had some money there was food cooked he would go off for a cake at his wake yeah, people walked people we didn't know that walked you know what i mean with him you know to manila to his final resting by not to where he was gonna be cremated i'm just saying it many people didn't know about that birthday parties i think it was peachy one time she brought picking dick picking duck you know expensive you know <laughs> picking duck i think he's gonna eat it you think he's gonna bring it home no he gave it to one of the families that lives that have no home that lives in luneta park you eat everybody eats her. when uh before dying i think just a little bit before still he wanted pandesal so he told arnold here's 200 pesos go buy me pandesal He's like, Mantoni, that's too much. You cannot eat that much. No, you buy it for everybody. For the uh, gotcha. hey, that's just how it is. When his house burned down, students came, he shared everything to everybody. That's wonderful. The thing wonderful. is, he didn't want to be healed. Sad to say, he didn't like hospitals. We tried to get him in a hospital, we really tried, and it was too late. Then his wife got sick again, and he literally said, You know, my only thing I'm praying for, Nico, every day, only time I saw with him, tears in his eyes, and all of us was that my wife will pass before me because I cannot see myself living without her. So again, wish granted because she passed away two days after, two weeks after him. So at least that. Another thing, you know, Mantoni could have left oh, the Philippines. Oh, Tear you, know, <laughs> you know why he didn't go to Australia when he went with Edgar, I think Edgar, Christopher Ricketts, you know, the masters of Arnis tour, I think. The whole, the whole, uh, trip there. 
Yeah. But I asked him, Antonio, I heard that they wanted you to stay there. Why you didn't stay there? It's like, Nico, when I'm there, I see people walking, eating burgers on their way to work. You know me? I like to sit down and eat. But like that, that's so natural, you know, like, uh, hey, he would have been the one in Canada. He would have been the one. It would have been more. He's the one always promoting everyone. He's giving even, hey, Romy and him are friends. Don't get me wrong. That's why I find it sad that certain things are being said. That Mantoni went away from the original teaching. No. Well, away from it, it's funny to say, because he said he went away from it because he needs an answer to every, you always need a different answer to a different angle. If you look at the last, if I understood it well, I said, yeah, but it's normal. That is, of course, He's, everybody said it themselves before. Antonio never reacted the same way. You cannot, because there's never one strike yeah, that will be the same. true. But no, there's no, these guys brought, and I think, you know, when I did the KI theme episodes, a lot of, and, well, I, I don't want to say answers. I shouldn't say that. What I should say is that a lot of different perspectives came in. And one of those perspectives was that all the guys had a previous background. So when they came, some of them, their own interpretation, their influence, body types, length, you know what I mean? So I think I think there's a bunch of stuff that kind of came and it got mixed and what have you, you know? You can there you can be right, yes. But then I will give you two samples where some people, yes, probably, you know, this, yes. But other people still, they go look for a technique and they don't realize that the technique is dependent on the situation. If my hand is here, I am not going to use a tombada technique if the weapon of my opponent is already pointed down. Hmm. Because tombada is not, it's me trying to drop his weapon. It's not a technique. So why would I use, you know, a tombada against a weapon that's already down? That's already down. No, it makes sense. Yeah, yeah. And that's not anymore. And then we talk about economy of motion. If we use a saloc, a saloc, you know, we just sometimes just need like a Montoni used to call it pitik, just a small like on a deviation, you know what I mean? Just enough to be able to create that opening. Then we see other people talking about range, economy of motion. They really can articulate it so well. Sad to say is that most of our coaches over there, they really can show it. Like Mantoni has a different way of touching. Like I said, it's a constrained approach. He will tell you this. It's good, Nico. Eh? This is good. Eh? Can I show you another way of doing that? And then you're like, ah, that's really better. Because I had a problem all the time from Piquiti was this. I had a problem all the time. You know, I don't really have a bad. I was always um, crossing. Oh, okay. Like, okay. Uh-huh. Crossing, crossing, playing like that. And that's something that they couldn't phantom. That's really one thing that I, and to be honest, yes, if you want cardio, you want to have like some fun. Yeah, the PTK, man, everybody knows that you're moving those feet for good, bad, and different over you. Yeah. You know, there's you want to proper force. Me, my thing is this. The only that I didn't say it earlier, but I said that I analyzed. I analyzed people's feet. People don't know, don't have locked ankles anymore. If you don't lock your ankles, you know, because we don't need stiffness. Everybody thinks we need stiffness. No, we need locked. We need ankles. We need to be able to bend and extend. You know, that's it. Because if we are continuously extended, there is no more bend. So we will be delaying defense. If we do, if we you don't know, fully extend here, very hard to get back on a, on a proper defense, right? That's why all our strikes are continuously how they call this. There is a minimal bend. It's same as in running. Everybody teaches always like running me- mechanics. You need triple extension. There's no such thing. Mm. It never exists because then we really would like no more that we have so many Achilles tears, for example. So my point is we need to learn how to move simultaneously. I look at Vico, you know, he moves so swift left and right. Properly balancing all his feet. Yeah, no, Vico definitely has sparring. Arnold. Sparring. Arnold. 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 Form sparring. Can beat him. Sparring. His footwork. Why? Proper positioning of the feet. Yeah, I'm not going to give all the tricks right then and there because <laughs> I'm just saying it's like amazing. You know, and I mean, he showed it, he demos it, and you know, he tried to get out of it. And then if I look at it from a movement perspective, from how levers, you know, how levers work. Oh, mm-hmm. and again, also another thing to say, I learned a lot of 
instinct. But I had that instinct already, I think. And otherwise, it was not good for me. You know, I already hit too fast before. I'm kidding. But I was already a little bit of hair trigger. You know, I grew up in an environment where, you know, like I said, it's eat or be eaten. I had to learn. But I'm very good in verbal judo. That's why I said a lot of fights I got out of my uh, excellent, uh, you know. Ability. Best skill. Best skill to have, yeah. right? I can tell you many stories in the Philippines. I saw, I got pulled an eye on. I talked my one time, somebody pulled an eye on me. One time, pulled it out. I just talked my way out of it because the barangay was not far. And I'm like, hey, man, what are you going to do with that? It's like a small opinion. I'm like, you're kidding me or what? You're going to get upset just for a few words here? I said, you're going to go to jail. You have a family. He was a tricycle driver. You know, you want to rip me off for money. And I said, hey, are you kidding me or what? You know, it's, it's not the first time I'm here, blah, blah, blah. He got upset. You know, he pulled out a knife. And I was like, of course. Oh, what's happening? But I didn't want to show him. And then I realized the barangay, you know, police is just behind. I'm like, Hey, look behind you. You're going to go to jail. So the only thing, oh, put Nangina, I'm sorry. Yeah. And then he's like, and he put it back. Eventually afterwards, we saw each other again and we said hi because we lived in the area. You know, it's just, come on. You know what I mean? Yeah, fight, I another time I saw, I saw another fight next to my manager, you know, a bar. Bike passes in front. A kid runs over. And yeah, it gets almost sweeped by the bike. The bike didn't, it was not his fault, it was the kid, you know, cross, mm -hmm. you know, their kids cross everywhere. So anyway, by any chance, his cousin or his uncle, I think, just walked by and he had like one of those meat shops on the outside. And of course, big knives. And he walked by, he sees that knife, not his knife. Instinct. Ah, he charged mm -hmm. toward the guy. The two people on the bike literally froze, wouldn't have done anything because. I think even if you have trained martial arts, what are you going to do? You know, luckily one of his friends was quick and was able to uh, to grab him. So again, what kind of knife defense, what kind of Filipino martial arts prepares us for that? I do not know. So we have to, I think, approach it differently. We have to first seek what are we trying to learn? And if you mm -hmm. tell me, I, you know, I live in a dangerous environment, of course. We're going to go over the psychology. We're going to also work on how to draw the weapon. Because, I, you know, huh? another thing. I'm sorry, last story, then I go back. I used to carry a gerber knife, scuba knife. I used to be pretty quick in drawing out the knife. Daytime, I carry it upside down because I didn't need quick access, for example. I had time mm. to go. When I'm at night, I used to manage bar in Malate, Ermita area. You know, it's a touristic area. So, you know, you should. So I carry it upside down. Again, bad time of the day, three o'clock. You know, somebody over always told me, a teacher of mine, not good. Nothing ever good happens after midnight. And he's right. Nothing good <laughs> after. <laughs> anyway, I go home, I walk, and all of a sudden I can hear commotion coming behind me, really running really fast. Like <laughs> at that time, I was still like a little bit so, you know, had a had a drink. At that time, long time ago, 2003. <laughs> and then again, I just waited, turned around, I pulled the knife out. Good, I had restraint. You know what it was? A bunch of little kids trying to sell those flowers, those, you know, I thought I was going home to my wife. Again, if, yeah, oof. if, if what? So again, I removed my knife since ever because I always said myself, also, to be honest, my hands are as lethal as any weapon and i can justify it easily in uh, in court you know i mean i can put my finger like this deep into your eye i mean sorry not your eye i love you <laughs> <laughs> i'm kidding in anybody's eye but you get my point you can do that also you get my point it's just if we have that mindset i don't want anybody to have that mindset i rather teach people how to avoid it no right you give them the verbal absolutely i just think that's a responsibility of a teacher you know most of the fights we training for could be you know could be avoided there's, avoided. there's social that conflict situation this is not anti-social behavior you know mm -hmm. somebody pumps you drink you had a drink too much oh, fuck, oh, what? Hey, it's just, i'm really sorry man didn't purse can i buy you another drink oh eh? Guy wants to buy him another drink if he doesn't yeah, want to. Yeah. I agree with you. I think most can be avoided, whether it's the setting, whether you're just using your verbal skills, obviously not escalating it. You know, I, I think there's several things. And I think a responsible teacher should be instilling that and imparting that in their students. Um, so you don't have that that training, you know, uh, or should be, um, particularly with new students. So when did you 
let's get into C-Lot. How did you, um, how did you segue into C-Lot from FMA? I always, actually, I, I did some C-Lot actually before already. Oh, before? Okay. Me, okay. I touched a bit of everything. If you look at my, you go, my magazines, you know, I have like thousands of magazines and martial arts. I must have read anything possible in martial arts, you know what I mean? That's, again, even when I was in the Philippines, my mother was collectioning my magazines. I've been to workshops. I mean, I studied, and Silat, we used to have like, I haven't been many times, but I used to do some workshops. I did some workshops with Fred Mastro, you know, for Mastro. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, of course, you know, nice guy also. A different approach again to what I would do, but again, at that time, it went with my my line of work also. Then again, uh, I did some, some, a few lessons. There was a club here of uh, Pat Turpin that was like, um, you know, one of those classical styles. However, that was not what I was looking there at the time. You know, for me, Jews and all those things was like, you know, I didn't understand it. And then again, mm -hmm. Little by in the Philippines, also when I cut ties, actually, how I cut ties with Pikiti that's uh, I fought in the URCC, you know, URCC, uh, too. Yeah, have you heard about the University Reality Championship? The Alvin Aguila is uh, oh, it's yeah, it's MMA, yeah, yeah it's MMA. MMA. Yeah. So I met him during the Balikatan exercise, I met him during the Balikatan exercise, and you know, nice guy kicked it off a little bit. And all of a sudden, Bacolo, one month after, I get a phone call and he asked me, hey, Nico, are you okay to fight, to fight my heavyweight? And me, like I said, I used to be a bit overconfident, a bit cocky. Yeah, sure, no problem. You know, you need somebody, I'll do it. So me, 180 pounds, I think at the time, 185. The other guy, TJ Chu, lovely guy, became my friend now, uh, took 250 pounds. I never grappled with anybody since I don't know how long. I never wrestled, you know. I was only doing triangle footwork, uh, strength, you know. But again, you know, and I'm confidence. Mm -hmm. Didn't really train for it. three days before the fight. I'm still dancing with Marcus Valdo. I don't know Marcus Valdo. He's the Southeast A, the, the, the the most decorated wrestler in the Philippines. You know, great guy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ah, you know, really heavy martial arts wrestler. But anyway. I'm with Romel Tortal. Funny story. I'm with Romel Tortal. We arrived too early. We go to the bar where the press conference is supposed to be. And I'm there waiting and I'm a little bit nervous. So I'm like, oh, man, come on, I'm going to have a beer, right? You know, and I'm still going to have a beer. She's like, I need to take it easy. One, two, three. Until we're there after one, two hours, somebody comes in. Hey, guys, you are here in the wrong place. It's the bar next door. So we were in the wrong place. We enter in the other bar and there's the whole party, press conference, really big thing. Again, I ended up having some party. There was some vodka. It was a bit wild, like I said, at the time. Changed a lot since then. And, uh, yeah, ended up dancing, having a good time, and ended up going fight two days after out of shape. So that didn't really go so well. Mm. Didn't go too bad either. Didn't get knocked out. You know, referee stoppage because, you know, the guy was like, I was out of breath. He was on top of me. I was really... Daniel Foronda was in my, my corner. Daniel Foronda. I had the guy. The guy even said it after. He never took so many blows to his head. The only thing everybody put into my head is don't grapple with him. He's a sumo guy. He's a wrestler. Keep distance. In the beginning of the fight, TJ, if you're listening, tell them because I really believe and I'll take you on anytime. I'm kidding. But it's true. I mean, he's a friend of mine. We're joking. We said that. I stopped. He went for a takedown. I hesitated and I didn't circle. Second takedown, I got caught in the ropes. He hugged on to me. I had the impression I was there already for three hours. It was only like two minutes. <laughs> he went to the floor, you know, and he just started pounding. And I had a commercial coming up, you know, a couple of weeks after. So the only thing I could think was, I don't break my nose. So I was just doing this. Left, right. It was like, I promise you, when you're in a fight sometime, it's slow more. You, I don't know if you expect, it's slow more. Why is really slow? I'm sorry, TJ. You're really big and slow. <laughs> He's my friend. So, yeah, I fought in URCC. Then I went back to Manila and then I got scolded by Gigi, by the wife. Yeah, I'm sorry. Lovely woman also. She said, oh, you have a black eye. I'm going to give you a second one. Because she, uh, she told me that I wasn't supposed to talk with my opponent before the fight. They were sure they put an anting anting on me. They put some oh, curse. Oh, Trust me, because I wasn't supposed to talk to him. He firm believed in that. Huh? One time, me and Romel Tortal, we came home with a Chris 
given to us. We still don't know how much worth it was at midnight. Uh -huh. you, know what she, you know what she did? She brought us to the hinterlands and she had to give it to her medicine man. He took it. He never gave it back to us because he said that's something that had too much blood on us. Again, I think he sold it, but that's yeah, the story yeah. of my life. And then I left and I left to Manila. Then I looked for Mantoni because I had Daniel Santo before told me about Listrissimo. I went to Luneta Park. This is another crazy story. I went, I not that one, no, but Luneta Park. I saw Roger. I don't know if you heard about Roger, the guy with one one thumb. You know, he's sometimes them doing a little bit more than that. He has his own system. I saw one man training. I asked him, did you hear about Tony Diego? Where do they train? He's like, oh, I know 12 strikes of Illustrissimo. And then he showed me. I had no idea there was 12 strikes still at the time. Then we went to see, uh, he brought me to his gym instead of his master. And then I entered and I recognized uniforms. And then I saw Dieter Knutel on them. And then it was the gym of Rodel Dagok at the time he had a gym. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Master grandstand just a luneta lovely man i love master Rodel. lovely man i spoke with him they gave me a little demo but since he knew i was looking for mantoni he just said yeah no mantoni it's in luneta but it just also was like i think he had an operation and then again mm -hmm. time went by and i searched and i went to the internet and by chance i found like uh, there was serge gillette have you heard about him Who's serge that? gillette Serge Gillette is one of really also the original students before of Mantoni. He lived with him also. You know, he came here several times. Mm -hmm. French guy, but he only also under the radar okay. now. You know, but he wrote like a beautiful diary, and it's like hundreds and hundreds of pages in French. But in there, he didn't say, "Yeah, you go there to that gym, you find Mantoni." No, it's like. One time I ate with Pedro Reyes, then he introduced me there, then we went to eat Diniguan, then I took a jeepney. But after two weeks of reading, I was able to put together where to put a jeepney, where to take a jeepney, where to get off that was in Binondo mm. Church, going to Juan Luna Street, and that there there was an alley which I knew of uh, Babacan website, of all those articles, that alley, the famous alley. And then I saw the name of the cocktail trading corporation of Tom Ditan. So I arrived there raining. It's like raining, soaked. I turn left first on the church, wrong side, I arrive in the canal. I go all the way right and you arrive in Divisoria Market. If you've been to the Philippines, you know what I'm talking about. It's like, whoa, soaked, can't find it. On the way back, all of a sudden I see that alley. I look cocktail. It's like, wow. Then I walked in, asked after Tom, Tom came down and Tom, you know, pretty, I don't know how you say that, stoic, you know, very, you know, okay, yeah, why do you want to learn? Uh, me, honestly, I came from Bikini TSC. I told him a little bit of truth. And then, okay, here's my calling card. Mantoni just had operation, like that serious operation at his eyes. Call me in two weeks. Two weeks, never been the longest of my life. So, <laughs> after was a Thursday, I always remember it was a Thursday because we used to train Mondays and Thursdays in Binondo, sometimes Fridays with uh, Botocano with the Lightning Group. Mm. And but otherwise, it was Monday and, Monday and Thursdays. I went there and I came up. Tom was there, Ricky, another Chinese student, good friend, uh, mm. Arnold, Russell, I think. But anyway, and then Mantoni is not there still. Oh, okay. Mantoni still was not able to come. Do you want to go to his place? Do you want to meet him? I said, yes, of course. Right away, he went in the car. Tom was like a gentleman, drove us to Tondo, went to his house. Tony, you know, like, oh, welcome. You're the kindest smile. Never met. Sit down. Offered mm. you a piece of cake. Offered you a juice. Talked five minutes with him. Didn't ask any questions. He spoke more about Belgium. The man was extremely well read. He know more about any country in the world. It was incredible. Mm. And then he said, yes, you want to train with us? No problem. You come next time. Then you go. And in the beginning, he's not going to take care too much of you. Talk, mm -hmm. hi, how are you? And you sit it down. And I noticed only after a few months, when you realize, you know, the patience, you're there. Maybe a month, see, for me, two months. And he said, come on, let's move. And let's start and let's show. And from then on, a good friendship. I mean, I resigned my my wife, my children have known, my mother has known him, you know what I mean? He was just the kindest person to be around. He said in his yeah. gym, cups, when you go to his gym, the first thing he did was empty his cups in those plastic uh, goblets to drink water, full all around the windows. 
All right, so we all did the same. We asked why, because during Christmas he would buy gifts, he would buy candies, and he would go around in Tondo and give away candies, you know, like to all the kids, you know. So. Oh, how nice! Wow, wow, wow. So, so um, oh yeah, see that again. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. Do, do you have the kid? Um, you want the kids to do a demo? Yeah, I have my youngest one actually. But my youngest one, because we really don't have space for sticks, and you know, so he's gonna show us a little bit. The movements, you know, in, uh, okay. Indonesian, of the Indonesian martial arts. At the same time, maybe I can explain, like, for example, one or two. Let's see what I come up with. Yeah, definitely explain what he's doing. I'm going to lower myself so you have the bigger screen. Yeah, yeah, that I can also say because there's, like, one movement, for example. You know, um, ah, Popo? The Popo, yeah. you know the Popo, right? Yeah. In Illustrissimo, so it's a... Uh, I see similarities in Jalak Pinkor within uh, Silat. So I'll explain a little bit. I talked about okay. that last time. Okay. And that's my, that's what I love what Dan was saying also, reverse eye engineering. Reverse eye, yeah. Okay. Where the star came from. So. Okay. Let's right, I'm going to lower myself and I'll come back up when you guys are done. Oh, yeah. Which is the best way to build up? Yeah, so this is my youngest son. He's gonna set the big screen. Yo. Check if we still there. Oh, we got lost, I think. Oh, yeah. There's no more. Can you check? So you just you would first then with the Diane one, right? Nice and slow with the good roll. But afterwards you're gonna go just into your uh... I could wait. Sorry? I cried way into it. Slow, you're stuck in the middle, but I don't know. Way faster, slow. Normal speed. Are you there? You're in the fire. No, well, but I'm still naive. Welcome to your new iPhone, Zenny. Can you still hear me, or? Oh, yeah. I'm oh. Just, I can definitely hear you. I'm just wondering myself if you have a bigger screen. Yeah, no, the thing is, you know, we had a problem. This is actually perfect. You're going to see each other. Uh, wait, All right. Yeah. If you want, if you want me to stay up here, that's fine. No, can you set up? Shit? Okay. It's pink. Okay. Yunus, can you put yourself where you can do it? So again, here actually, what I'm going to make him show. I'm just going to make him show. You know how to call this? Some of the principles. You know what I mean? This yeah, is actually you know, sure. our basic foundational movements of silat. You have to remember, Sila is symbolic, so there's a lot of things, hidden meanings behind it, all right? We cannot cover all those today, but there's a lot of things I'll be able to, I hope, uh, clarify. Yeah, I'll just, okay. yeah, just, just, by the way, my 12-year-old son, that's Dean. My other son actually wants to demo, but he tore a hip flexor on playing football. So I'm also trying to avoid him a little bit for rest because he has a basketball game next week. Yeah, yeah, so, no, yeah, no worries. You know, let's go. Basic Obat Mohan.
You won't be seeing this guy doing that anytime soon. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it's just, and again, that was impressive. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, he's, his memory, you know, for, for, for I was going to say, all those moves, I've been like, yeah, you know, again, that is, that <laughs> is when you have a little bit more space, or maybe I can make a little bit, a few videos with the kids and send them to you. It's going to be easier and then show yeah, them. But you know, was, hey, they got to see. But do? again, my the reason for it is also to be honest, I do not necessarily like to show too much anymore. You know, before have you seen I trust a lot, huh? mm -hmm. I go a lot, you know, my abanico is not only an abanico, my abanico is a trust. You know, you have to remember when you work with a blade, it's not just the, the finding movement. Yes, no, we, it's can, a... we can use it as a stop, you know. I use it mm -hmm. often as a we can use this as a stop also. It's a stop also, of course. From there, we'll have a follow-up. But otherwise, my abanicos are trusting. Now, again, you know, it becomes deadly. I don't know who I'm showing certain things. Other people are showing, though. They let them be the new thing. Are you saying you from kit after the abanico? Is that? Yeah, I'm just, I mean, just say, abanico, I right away trust, right? Okay. You know, I, I mean, you. abanico. I trust that the same print. It's again, it's bend, extend, bend, extend. You know, we never stay in the same spot at the same time. Otherwise, it's like a sitting duck. But I'm just saying that now I'm trying to go a little bit away from that. I stay true to Illustrissimo, but I really would like to see how it can be more applied to them, to the empty hands. No, to yeah, but also to the to the stick. You know what I mean? To the stick because the stick still a little bit less lethal, a little bit like more easily to justify. You know when you hit somebody with something, you know what I mean? Because when I hit somebody with a sword, and I'm sorry, but less chance the guy survives. So if I go for the collarbone instead of for the temple, for example, you know, I mean, I think we can come up with a way of, you know, making it a safer alternative. And again, yeah, it goes back to doing what you have to do to nullify the threat and get out of there before you end up, before you're on being tried. You, you know what I mean? Self-defense is about just getting yeah. home. If I have to just say, hey, man, I'm sorry, and I have to swallow my ego and just I can get back to my kids, that's self-defense. Are you kidding me? To get back to your family? Absolutely. Yeah, I know. And honestly, that's what I want to tell you. That's what you're Dimitri, you know what I mean? And that's been proven over and over again. The only thing that people can remember, and it's true, I've been in, sorry, mama, <laughs> I have been some altercations, you know, not always, as I told my kids, you know, wrong place, wrong time. Often I've been attacked. I've been attacked by three military guys in Manila in a bar. No kidding. Been caught on the CCTV. I'm the only one who was arrested. Two SAS. No kidding. It's crazy. I have no idea what I did to survive. I survived. But I end up in the police station. Me. I didn't do anything. I got attacked. But don't ask me what I did. You know, the only thing I heard after from the guys, I got pulled out. By the bouncers okay i had not much police picked me up but again just to say that thinking that you're going to remember what happens in a fight you know what i mean you were not in a real fight you know you just clocked somebody you know what i mean because you took 
control of the situation. I'm not saying those techniques can't work, but first of all, you know, you're going to have to get out of that tunnel vision. And if I'm just focusing on you and I, you get into my face and I don't see what's coming from left and right, then I'm done. So the best way to be that, start circling, start looking for an escape. You know, ABC, that's another guy in Malaysia. I love his ABC. He went up to E and plus, I think, but I stick to ABC. My memory is not good enough. Avoid barrier, de-escalate, de uh, de-engage, you know, disengage, avoid. If you can, yeah, avoid. Get out of there. Put the, <laughs> the barrier, the barrier, barrier, yeah. less little barrier, you know what I mean? Or if you have a friend that you don't really like, use him. I'm kidding. Use a chair, use a chair. And then again, if there's no other way, disengage and leave. Then you leave, you know, unless you've got loved ones to protect, just get out of there. That's it. Go Simple. to the police. Right, you know, it's it's not right. complicated, you know? No, no, no. no, no. So again, but uh, yeah, and then what brought me to Silat? You know, again, Kanchechep Rahman, I have been looking. Actually, I was supposed to meet him already around 2012, mm -hmm. 2011, I believe. But I had a seminar for, because uh, I was into the, more, into the, you know, I taught kettlebells, you know, stuff like that, strength and conditioning. And I was in Malaysia for a seminar. And uh, I was supposed to, I already booked my flight. Was it Singapore? Singapore. I was in Singapore mm -hmm. for a second. And I already booked my flight to go to uh, to Indonesia. And I was already going to go to Garut. It was always been Garut because I heard about Pangliput. Really, you know, I really love the story behind the woman, you know, like uh, Ibueni. And uh, yeah, but then uh, I went to the workshop. I went a bit too hard. And the day after I woke up, I literally couldn't walk anymore. I had to crawl out of bed. It took me six hours before I could actually be functional. So I had to miss my flight. Couldn't make it to the uh, thing. I had to go home. Never mind. But I lost my job in uh, I, in 2018. I lost. My, we qualified for the world championship. We celebrate. Two days after, we get a phone call to say that our services are no longer required. So don't ask me why. You know, there was a national. I believe it was a nationalistic uh, decision. They want to send the full uh, Philippine uh, team there. I can understand them. You know, they might have think I'm American and that I was the secret behind their basketball skills, which I'm not. I don't even know how to dribble a basketball. <laughs> I'm kidding. But so, yeah, so that hurt me a little bit. And I want to go back. And I'm like, no, I'm just going to think about myself. Think training me. Always been wanting to learn Silat. I asked Abul, uh, yeah, Abul Kalam. You know, yeah, I don't know if you heard the student of uh, Shamin. Oh, yeah, yeah, actually, the one of them I'm pretty, pretty familiar yeah, with. We, we message. I think it's, I think. Lovely persons, lovely guys, you know. Lovely. He, is he does the Tai Chi? No, he's also into Silat. So he did Silat. Right, no, but twice. He, but he does, does he also do Tai Chi? Uh, possible, you know, maybe he doesn't dare to brag about it to me because there's you know, one of them I, that I've been kind of talking. <laughs> about. He's very so nice. yeah. I love Tai Chi. I love Tai Chi. No, I no, no. The only reason I bring it up is he was talking about it, how he fuses, and uh, but much to your point, if it's the same guy, very nice. Yeah, I and uh, to be honest, to say is yeah, Tai Chi is a little bit distrissimo of. Uh, you know, Illustrissimo is like Tai Chi, but a lot of people refer to it like that. It's extremely, how do you call this, for the well-being, you know, the movement parts. Wow, you got to love it. But again, to go back to uh, my wife, said Silat, she's confusing me because my wife is behind me trying to make me like uh, science. And no, she no, no, know. but here's the thing I wanted just, because um, we're getting close to time. Um, Already, yeah, I talked that much. No, 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 no. It's been good. The demo, no, everything, everything, no, everything's good. Seriously. No, uh, no, no worries. What I do want to just before is that I, you, so you're teaching back in Belgium. So like, tell us about your system. Well, you know, to be honest, I don't teach for the moment yet. I just opened up my system. I, my group right now, we just registered it. It's so actually about it. So what do you, what do you, what do you want? What's your group? I mean, what is your system comprised of? And what do you think you're, what do you want to get across to the community? But well, I want to cross against the community, like I said, and I want to bring back, you know, the true martial culture, you know, the body, mind, and soul that, you know, because we don't live in, I mean, sadly enough, yeah, we do live in more times on the news, but again, let's not go there. I would love that people become a little bit more respectful towards one another, and I think martial arts can actually bring that, mm. you know, 
a little community, you know what I mean, where we take care of one another, you know, where I come outbirting violence. And I do believe that, you know, a lot of children, because of the parents are working, you know, they need some kind of a role model. So I'm trying really? myself better myself a little bit because again i'm also just a human being i also have my own demons to 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 to, to you know to deal with and you know that's about it i love children the only people that i really comfortable with to work with is children so again i have just started like an asbl and uh, it's a non-profit and uh, from there we teach physical education because i do believe that physical education is one of the least understood and most important components, I mean, in the educational system. I do believe that if we as children would have been maybe more successful uh, in the, the, the playground in elementary, we might have actually result to less violence in the future or less frustration or less alcohol. Socialization, or right? Skills, right? First words, kind of many times first encountered the playground, right? <laughs> there we go. And again, you have to have confidence for that because mm -hmm. kids are if you're a little bit chubby and you're a little bit this and you can't run you trip over your own feet and again there's of course genetics some people are a little bit more you know no we give it but we do still be able to teach them how to maybe go in a triple flexion triple extension how to stand on one leg you know how the guy is not the fastest but in my mini football team i tell you nobody passes him because i gave him that confidence hey you get it. Nobody passes here. You're my stopper. And he stopped a few guys and he's having fun. He's a terrible football player. He's not good. But he's a stopper and he has fun. And that's so he has a role. That's good. It's fun. So, yeah, yeah, it's a community of uh, combined teachings. We will, uh, you know, install, um, of course, martial arts, physical education. And it's great, through. though. You're targeting targeting the kids. I think that's fantastic. Um, and I would love to. I'm trying to get a few of you guys to work with me because it's not my field i would like to go into the more into the choreography you know develop like a stunt team for example oh, okay. also maybe showcase like filipino martial art indonesian martial art but as a stunt as a choreography you know what i mean because again you know what i mean kids just want to be busy kids just want to release that anger nowadays you know we have like glorified knife instructors who just want to be john wicks and again i'm not i don't think it's going to help our world you know i don't think it's going to go no i think more, no not for the goals that we think of far as the self-defense thing and all that but for bringing fma because due to the theaters and all that i think it'll bring fma yeah, more popular, but maybe not for the best reasons Maybe not, but hey, but look at this. Look at Kang Chechep. Look at what they did with the movies. They're some of the most violent movies. But hey, but if you go to train with him in his, con in his hey, there is always the principle of three. Huh? You only repost after three times. Huh? You know, there's also the avoidance first, you know, and I mean, and again, yeah. avoidance. From, hey, man, this is enough now. Third time you hit. But I'm just saying, they have such a community there. He takes care of everybody. He talks to them. You know, this is movie. They really make a clear distinction about this is movie. This is life. Right. This, yeah. And I think that's like, in other words, if people are so much just seeing it on the cinema and they actually think, oh, this is what they do. No, no. And that's why I think the potential negative aspect, like the misinterpretation are going on or just seeing in that lens, you know, no, I know, but I think we're on the good path, honestly. You know, it's good that we can have those honest conversations. Like I said, you know, I mean, I'm a person, very emotional, but you can ask anybody, everybody I talk with, I always say the same thing. I mean, not the same thing. I'll say what's in my heart. If I'm wrong, I'm ready to admit it also. No, so I like, mean, yeah, yeah, that's why you're on here. I mean, honestly, there's, I see good things in you. Or, I mean, yeah, so that's no worries there. I it's sad. I just found it sad a bit. I would, I wish that really Calisistrissimo can become, become one again. But it's just, you know, and we just keep Mantoni as we did before, you know, how we love them all so much and that we just respect him, that we don't try to create that division because now there's, it's true, there is many students, but there was always one Calisistrissimo before. Everybody would always come to let us see Mantoni, take a picture, yeah, the Ray Galan will come over, every student. Not often they will let them train. I saw Ray Galang come give 1,000 pesos to Mangtoni and Mangtoni took it and after a while he sent Arnold to give it back because he didn't want money to have a picture taken with him. For him, you know what I mean? That is not taken. Again, he would have rather that we would have asked him, can you teach some things to my students? But of mm -hmm. course, 
they cannot really also because of course it's the same as me i used to teach kettlebells in the philippines i was the first one to introduce it afterwards everybody learned from me eventually you know what they did i started the philippine kettlebell club you know what they did after they started the philippine kettlebell club with one l and you think anybody would give credit to have learned from me first? No, they would say they learned from the Russian. Yeah, after. human nature, I know. It's I, I, I go, human nature. But I would love us to be able to go away from that. Indonesia, Silat, that doesn't exist. You need to go there. That's what I want to say. My kids performed. I performed there. I performed for the Ministry of Tourism. My kids performed wow. for like, uh, in Silat, they performed for the, for what was that? A circumcision ceremony. When there is a mall that opens, there is silat. When there is a circumcision, there is silat. It is part of the culture. The teacher of silat, we all call them like Abba. You know, it's like father. If me, I bring my sons to you as, the, for example, a teacher, you are entitled to uh, educate my child. I mean, if you see my child doing something wrong, uh, you can actually uh, reprimand them, you know, that's accepted because they do know that those people are also men of a very high moral compass. You understand? Okay. They're okay. Okay. And I believe that's what we lack right now, you know, and I just say... Definitely is a more moral compass. Yeah. Not much money in the Philippines, in Indonesia also. They have struggles, but they have more lively good. They can, it's different. In now Indonesia, that states, we can use a more moral compass. <laughs> yeah, you know, I know. But again, again, I'm sorry. I think we went to a... No, was, no, no. This is all great. It's just that um, I, 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 at 3 o'clock, I got to... Uh, yeah, yeah, me too. So, yeah, what we will be doing this last thing, I think my wife said to... Uh, we will be doing a seminar. I think, I don't know if you heard about that. Me and June uh, Occidental. Yeah. So, it will be our first uh, joint seminar. I mean, me teaching... Where about? Fishing. So, where? Belgium, of course. Because June is coming now to... Uh, he's coming to install... He's coming to work in, uh, in Belgium the coming years. So, when I heard about that, I reached out to oh him. Oh my god, yeah, and you guys both have a cure. Wow, that'd be oh, that's gonna be so neat. Yes. Um, he also, you know, he has a good uh, relationship with my teacher. He also went, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Mang Tony came from Balintawak, so I said, might be a great time to do something together because it's still combined teaching. When is, when is the plan for this? Uh, October 16th. So, October 16th, yeah, and what time? Oh, it's gonna be a whole day, nine to three, right? Nine to five. It's like a whole day affair, you know. So that's live, right? It's not online. Huh? That's uh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just thinking, huh? Oh, you might welcome to come shame. to Belgium, my friend. It's a no, lovely no, place. I, I, I mean that, that but what I'm thinking is how maybe to promote it and cover you guys on so October yeah, it's, it's October sixteenth. We will send you, we'll send you the details. But again, that is really more to show, showcase a little bit illustrissimo. I will showcase some of uh, course, the principles behind what you show. I, I was about to say you something earlier. I'm sorry. Yeah. Early, I have seen my move. You have uh, Paul Po in the uh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Paul Po. Well, you know, earlier you must have seen my, my son do a similar thing. Yes, in, yes, yeah. But you know, now I realize that's actually a Paul Po. And actually, the reason for me this is that this is a neutral leg, meaning that this leg is now free to do so many things. This leg can kick and this leg can move. So it's not just, and it's also a way to move because if you want to make a big movement, it has to occur on the heel. If you want to make a small movement for power, it occurs on the toes. It's a little bit like those Japanese uh, gongs, right? But to go back to this, for me, this is a neutral stance. So it yeah. means from here, depending on the movement of my opponent, I can go into my next move. I never thought about it that way. I only thought about it that way when I learned the Harimau, I mean, the, the, that part of the leg positioning, they call it, uh, anyway, neutral position in, uh, mm. in English, meaning neutral weight is all distributed on that leg. So the other leg is free to do whatever it takes afterwards. Okay. I didn't see it that way after. And there's still similar movements. Another thing that's beautiful, you saw this position. It's uh, yeah, this, this actually shows that you can actually block with the inside, but if you can block with the outside of the hand, it's symbolic because of course there is no written oral tradition at the time. Yeah. But how are they able to pass everything on? Because everything was really hidden without those. One position can mean two things. Not only one thing, you understand, like this. This just means that also you have this part that you can mm. use. You would like a 
a slap here it is also we can use this hand and we can also use to hit to the the side of the the, the groin for example you know it's only just symbolic it's amazing it's beautiful so again i'm i'm really delving a little bit more into that footwork what i noticed what i said earlier what changed a lot of people focus too much on their strikes and their strikes become rigid mm. montoni used to teach us like a constraints led approach you know he was giving you options yeah you have this but there's also another way of doing that and then this while sometimes now i find it too linear when this happens this happens and again if you do not have a good grounding, good lanka, uh, good footwork, okay. good position, because positioning of the feet is number one. Hands are free because hands will depend where you're going to find yourself. You understand mm. what I mean? I think now we have too much. If one hits you here, you have to do this, and then you have to do that. No, that depends. I think number one, get out of the way. Afterwards, you know what I mean? Hands are free, free to do everything. Yeah. And then double hand, double hand sticks. I love it. But I don't necessarily love it because I'm going to fight with somebody with two sticks. I just love it to be able to get that ambidex, you know, to be able to as efficient as my, with my right sure. and left. Espada Hidaga, another common mistake. You see the strike with the blade here, and then you see the daga here. So I'm wondering, what are they killing here and what are they killing there? Mm -hmm. Without moving, you understand? No, no, they no. should always do this. If I can reach with a long weapon here, then I have to be able to position myself with a short weapon to be go farther. If that makes sense. So that I think is too much from the how was that called? Artistic, you know what I mean? The ting ting ting. It's beautiful, it's great, but it's not it lost its purpose. Now the pattern, I think a lot the excess of patterns it was the beginning of getting lost in translation and all that. Because it's self. I never learned the 12 strikes before 10 years, I think. I think it's only around like 2010 when Tony started showing me the 12 strikes. Before that, I'm like, Montoni, you never show me 12 strikes. Eh, no need. Montoni would say, yeah, yeah, I hit you here, and then what do you do? And then if I come from here, you can do this. Montoni used to throw a tennis ball at us. Ask Arnold. And then well, yeah, sometimes tennis balls. Avoid, avoid. <laughs> but Arnold, uh, Montoni was really also the only one who could apply, like, uh, he would apply his techniques in sparring, you know. And I mean, it's beautiful. You wouldn't see do excessive chambering, you know. Everything was like yeah. spot but again, lovely man. We had a great group, and I hope everybody would get together again. Like I said last time, you know, you know me. The book for me, that book was the that book should still come out. If they want to make peace, bring uh, that number one book back and give it to the family of Mantoni, you know, because they need the money. Whatever they do with it, they're still like I think a 12, 13 year old kid. I said right now, maybe older. He was seven in uh, 2014. So yeah. Eight years more, right? That's 15, 15, 16. Right? Saying, you know, money here and there, you know, can always help. Arnold, you know, when he can find them, buy some shoes every year, he still takes care of it, you know. It's just, and Arnold also doesn't have much. I'm happy, you know, many people go train with him. I'm not a fan of online training, but I'm a fan for people like, you know, that there's still that opportunity. Otherwise, they would not be able to make end meet, you know. Yeah. And I, so that's a great thing you did also i mean helping out there and you know like you said we all have to make a living i agree but what i would like to do is that like let's make a living with some integrity you know what i mean we can't do anything or we shouldn't teach anything that could actually cause cause harm to anybody else because everybody has a family and if i hurt somebody that person has a family and that person has family that loves him and my family needs me also. And if anything happens to me, if I throw a punch at somebody and I kill somebody, you throw a punch at me and I die just because, you know, you spilled a drink or, I, you know, I took your parking spot. Mm. And again, I'm not being addressed anymore in Filipino martial arts. Now it's cut the throat, break the neck, go for it. Yeah, Best it's way way too much on the overkill. I, I, yeah. I mean, I, I, I hope, I hope that the FMA discussion really we can go there and I hope that we all could be once together you know like a big group different yeah groups. yeah that would be that would be fun and uh, I no, tell you Bercy, Bercy. more than ever let's put it that way as a result of this you know my dream is Paris Bercy biggest show ever in France you know what I mean that's the one I've been witnessing since I'm a child I said you know can Chechep was there last two years ago mm. Romel was there Tortal that's also my first yeah my first Time I got impressed, I forgot by Filipino martial arts was uh, um, I don't uh, what's the name again? 
Oh, Oliver, Oliver Bersabal. Corredas, uh, Corredas, I miss the man. He was based in, uh, in Paris for a long time. Okay, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's from Cebu, but again, you know, he was like, there's been some histories with him. And, but again, he was great. Then René Natosa, of course. I remember mm -hmm. I bought all the videos of René Natosa, all the videos of uh, Mike and I. Like I said, I've been to web, I've been to workshops with, uh, What's his name? Yang Wing Ming, you know, the, 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 the Kung Fu Kina guy, you know. Mm -hmm. I've been everywhere. Jean Marc, I'm, I'm Salem Asli, I had the pleasure of meeting. Mm -hmm. I haven't spotted well, but yeah, that's just great. I have so many other people I met in the Philippines. Master Colimbo, you know, we went, I went a bit all over. That's me, that's how I am. I talk off the cuff, and if nobody asks me a specific question, I even listen, I haven't even looked at the questions because. When I talk, I talk, you know, that's me. I'm sorry. Yeah, you know, that's fine. But what I want to do is when you guys got closer to that, definitely know we'll definitely promote it. And we'll all that. But yeah, I got to run, but I, I appreciate you coming on. This is no, great. No, Thank no, you for the demo. I appreciate talking. There's so many more things I want to say, but again, you know, hey, I know, you know what? We always bring, we always bring people back on. So hey, you know, I hope one day maybe we can have this talk in person, you know, yeah. like, hey, you got to visit Belgium one time. We will visit the States. You visit Belgium. Who knows? The Europe is on the list. I know. I know. Now that things are. Ah, the, I gotta go. you, you have a daughter also, I believe, right? What's that? Yeah. You have a daughter, right? I think you have a kid. Yeah. It's oh, yeah. Two, yeah. Twins. Yeah. Yeah. Twins. All right. How yeah, old are yeah. they? 12, right? They did, uh, no, 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 no. They just turned 14. So he's in the oh. BJJ HEMA. She's boxing FMA all the way. She's in the HEMA. HEMA. He is. He is. Uh, is I have one of my I have my cousin actually you know my cousin is one of the head uh, he my instructors here in Belgium yeah so, he loves it he loves yeah it. apparently I'll go visit him one time I heard it's great so no know, he loves the German long yeah. sword he loves it I will let you get back to work and uh, to whatever appointment yeah but again thank you for coming on please sorry. please thank the wife for everything okay and, and I'm very sorry I was able to to address probably you know many other questions oh, and hey this is great the demo thank you great. For to me and uh, my regards to all and I really miss the Philippines and I hope to be back soon and I hope you know to, to see all my friends again very soon and thank you Dean for having me also all right all right Guru and Nico you take care thank you very much bye bye all right and that wraps up 307 who is next Wednesday Wednesday night I just got confirmed 7 or 8 p.m. I'm thinking 8 p.m. Uh, part two with Dan Loman and where he's going to showcase his weapons. We didn't get to that part one. So uh, I think he's going to speak a little, a little more on Kiro, but definitely the whole weapons he's going to show. And after that, I'm not sure who's coming on. I don't, uh, I don't know what's in front of me, but uh, I'll have to find out. Also, do not forget, please. End of the month. Uh, this, you know, helping out, uh, again, for those you don't know or might have not heard, uh, Jesse's car was broken to, all his equipment was stolen. So we're uh, doing a raffle, which is going to be the last Sunday of the month. And there's been, I mean, Bram Frank came through with a bunch of weapons or some books that we had left over. Uh, but great prizes, 10 bucks a ticket. You know, we're going to try to get him some money so he can buy some of his equipment back. He does have a GoFundMe currently going on as well in conjunction with this. So, again, if you can help out in a way with either the GoFundMe or the uh, fundraiser here. In the FME discussion, the, uh, the post is pinned. You'll see all the stuff that's been donated and what have you. Also, his PayPal address is also in there as far as where to buy the tickets. The ticket money is going directly to him. So if you want to get tickets, definitely get his PayPal address. And that's all, again, all under the pen post. All right, folks, thank you to those who uh, jumped in and watched, and we'll see you. I will see you Wednesday with Dan Lohman. All right.